Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at conditional probability in Venn diagrams so we can answer questions from exercise 2c. So we've been introduced to conditional probability in the previous video, exercise 2b, so let's just see how this applies to a Venn diagram. Um, in this question here we're given events A and B are two events such that the probability of A is 0.55, probability of B is 0.4 and the probability of A and B is 0.15. First of all, draw a Venn diagram. Okay, well, we've got events A and B. We know that the intersection of A and B will have a probability of 0.15. We know that the whole circle for the probability of A must add up to 0.55 in total. So therefore, we know that the missing space is represented with 0.4. And very similarly, the whole probability for B must add up to 0.4. So therefore, we know that the missing space here must be 0.25. And also to fill in the box, we know that all probabilities should add up to 1. So we'll work out what we've got left over once we subtract 1, and that's 0.2. So there we are, Venn diagram drawn. A couple of questions then. Find the probability of A, given that B is true, and a few more down below. So, the probability of A happening, given that B happens. So it's the second one that we know is factually true. We know that B has absolutely happened um, if we're taking apples and bananas, we're effectively walking up to a person who's currently eating a banana and asking them if they also happen to like eating apples. So as in the previous section, it's the area that we are considered uh, considering to be restricted. If they, we know that they like bananas, we know that we're only dealing with this section of the Venn diagram here. Effectively, it's definitely not any of those people and it's definitely not any of those people. It's just this section of people here inside that B circle that we are interested in. So we can now calculate the probability that um, A is true. So in this case here, the part of the circle for B where A also overlaps is represented by a probability of 0.15. So it's going to be 0.15 on top of the fraction and then on the bottom of the fraction is with the probability of, what's the probability out of? The probability is out of 0.4, so that's what's going to go on the bottom of my calculation there. So I need to calculate this, bung it into the calculator, and your probability comes out to be 3 eighths. So that's the answer to that question. And the probability that someone, um, the probability of A, given that B is true, is 3 eighths. So we go to the second one then. Part C, find the probability that B is true given that either A or B is true. So in the second section here, the second section tells us that either A or B is true. So therefore the only probability we can tick off or knock off here is this 0.2 down here. We know it can't be that 0.2 down here. The probability question is not going to involve this figure down here because we know that A or B is true. So we now know, effectively, the denominator for our answer here. The denominator is the sum of all of these three areas, because that's what it's going to be out of. Now, what's going to go on the top? Well, the top is going to go the probability of B. So the probability of B here, that's the whole of the B circle, is 0.4. So the answer here is 1 half. So we're looking for... Yeah, great, I've got that right. So it's the probability of B will go on the top, and it's the probability of the given that that goes on the bottom. So you can effectively think of, the way that I think of this is, probability of B, given that A or B is true, is that the second one will go on the bottom of the fraction, whatever this probability is, and the first one, probability of that one, will go on the top. But you don't count any areas that is not included in this bit here. So it's a little bit more fiddly than just this. Um, in... A or B. So it has to be in A or B for its count. Okay, and let's move on to the last one then. So the probability of A is not true given that B is not true. So let's sort out the second bit first. The second bit means that B is not going to be true. So therefore we can cross off all the regions where B is not true. So we cross off the regions where B is true because we're only interested in where B is not true. So 0.4 and 0.2 are the only regions we're interested in that has a total of 0.6. So we're looking out of a region of 0.6 probability. 
Now we're looking for the probability that A is not true. And it's only this figure down here that counts. This figure here is where A is true. A does happen. Um, the probability of A is, is happening there. So the answer is going to be 0.2 out of 0.6, which is equal to one third. So the answer there is one third. So this is the probability of A happening, given that B does not happen. So the total is going to be 0.6. So the way you construct your answers here, you actually go for the denominator first, uh, crossing off anything that you don't want and doing it out of whatever you do want it to be out of. And then you're looking for the probability of the first thing here happening. That's 0.2. So 0 0.2 out of 0 0.6 is one third. Lovely, okay. So that's how we do these types of questions here then. Hopefully it's not too tricky. Have some practice and hopefully it all clicks together. So pause the video and try this question out. Right, okay then, let's get started on this question then. So in this question here, we're not gonna have probabilities inside our Venn diagram. We're gonna have numbers inside our Venn diagram, uh, the amount of uh, youths that either play snooker or pool, both or neither. Uh, given that 65 play snooker, 50 play pool, let's do a P, S and a P, a 20 play both, so let's put that one in first. Remember, the, the way that you fill in a Venn diagram is you fill in from the centre first and work your way outwards. 50 play pool, so that needs 30 more people to be involved in that total circle there. And 45 more people need to be involved in the snooker circle for a total of 65. Add these together and you get 95, so therefore 25 don't play either. <clears throat> so, let's get to answering the question then. Find the probability of A and not B being true. So both of these have to happen here. So... Um, so snooker is A, okay, let's replace that with an A, and pool is B. Okay, this makes a bit more sense now. Um, so A has to happen and B cannot happen. So in this case here, we've got 45, where this 45 here is representing people who do like playing snooker and don't like playing pool. So these are the 45 people I'm interested in, out of a total of 120. These people in the middle here, these people do like playing pool, but they also like playing snooker. Uh, so, so other way around. These people do like playing snooker, but they also like playing pool. Um, but I'm interested in people who don't like playing pool. The next one, find the probability of A given that B is true. So in this case here, let's sort out the denominator first. It's only people who are pool players that I'm going to be looking at. Effectively, we're going to walk up to someone who is currently playing pool and interview them and ask them, do you like playing snooker? And we want to work out the probability that they will say yes. So the amount of people who do like playing snooker out of this circle of 50 people here are 20. 20 people from this circle like playing snooker as well. So the answer here is 20 out of 50. Probability of B given that A is not true. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to count how many people, let's sort out the denominator first, do not like playing pool. So no, do not like playing snooker. So these 65 people do like playing snooker. These 55 people here do not like playing snooker. So it's these 55 people I'm interested in here. Probability of B of them actually liking pool, well that's these 30 people here, so it's 30 out of 55 that like playing pool, um, given that they don't like uh, snooker. And then the last one, probability of A, given that A or B is true. So given that A or B is true, let's sort out the denominator first here. It's either going to be out of these 95 people here. We're going to interview someone who's playing at a pool table or snooker table, um, and we're going to ask them, do you like playing um, do you like playing snooker? 65 people like playing snooker out of the area that I've just uh, kind of working with. I've crossed out the 25 down here because I want people who are either playing snooker or pool. And it's these 65 people here who do like playing snooker. So it's 65 out of 95. Now you can obviously simplify all these fractions here. That's fine as well. So 
Hopefully this wasn't too bad. Um, it's just a case of reading off the figures from the Venn diagram. Um, have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 2C, particularly the trickier ones towards the end, the exam style questions, the probability style questions, the, so the problem solving style questions, and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for asking.